today on Divorce Court. I'm here today to get some help on my relationship. My biggest problem with Sarah, it's gotta be her jealous behavior with my fans and other females. The comments on social media are very disrespectful and I feel like that's disrespectful to me. And it's even come to a point where she's gotten into a couple fist fights and a, a few of my shows over it. So it's kind of a big issue. <laughs> Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here with Josh Dienert and Sarah Harris. The two of you have been together for two and a half years. You are here because you are contemplating marriage. But, Ms. Davis, you have some serious concerns as a function of Mr. Dienert's profession, and he is a rapper, right? I do it somewhat. <laughs> no, 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 no. You're a rapper, right? Oh, yeah. You're absolutely. a rapper. Yeah. You filled out your compatibility test. You wanted an honest opinion from me as to whether or not marriage was a good idea. And if so, how do you engage in a marriage with someone who is famous and has a lot of fans and do so successfully? So that's what we're going to discuss today. Mr. Dean and I'm going to start with you. Why don't you tell me a bit about how you <laughs> met and, and, and where you stand right now? Uh, well, as far as how we met, I actually met Sarah through uh, her booking a photo shoot with me, because I'm uh -huh. also a photographer. So um, we had a mutual friend who said, hey, I know this girl, she's gorgeous, and uh, she wants to do a photo shoot with you. So she had booked the photo shoot and canceled on me the first time, and booked it again and canceled the second time. <laughs> so I basically had told him, I'm not going to do it. I'm done with it. I'm, I don't like flaky models. And he said, you know what, give her one more chance. She's been really busy having things go on. So I did. I gave her another chance. We did the photo shoot, and I fell in love with her. I mean... I mean, quickly, was, too. Very quickly. You thought she was out of your league, and oh, then yeah. she came over to look at the photos, and next thing you know, within a month, you moved in? Yeah. <laughs> now, generally, I do not advocate that kind of behavior. Ms. Davis, what did you see in him in that 30 days that made you say, I will be safe and cared for in this guy's home. He's different, and just the connection, um, just a spiritual connection. I'm a very spiritual person, so it's really hard when I can pick up on vibes from people that actually connect, because I don't really like people. So <laughs> when... <laughs> she doesn't. I don't when <laughs> I, I realized, like, we had that, that connection, it was just instant, and that doesn't happen for me. Ever. Now, when you say spiritual connection, mm -hmm. was it something that you ever felt from someone else? No. Was it so this was unusual, yes. unique in its its form. Has it dissipated over time? Do you still feel that unique spiritual connection with this guy right here? Yes. You say though, she's very jealous of your groupies. Could you tell me a couple of incidents? where she has caused you trouble because of them? Uh, I think one of the, the most wild ones was uh, there was a girl online who had said I was cute on a post. You mm -hmm. know, oh, you look so sexy in that picture. Um, it was one of my rap photos, basically me performing on stage. And she had got on there and was super angry about it. Started cussing the girl out, you know, stay the hell away from my man, you know, what are you thinking, this and that. Um, it escalated, obviously, to the point where she both blocked each other. They both blocked each other on Facebook. Um, but it didn't end there because I was actually performing at a show. And after I had got off stage, the girl was there. So she saw her and walked up and grabbed her by the hair and popped her in the mouth and took her to the floor. So <laughs> Now, Ms. Davis, <laughs> what was it about that post that caused you so much anxiety? Because it was constant from that one specific person, so I needed to take care of it myself. Let me ask you this. <laughs> did he respond in a manner... Is he? Did he respond uh, in an inappropriate manner to any of her overtures? No. Never, not one time? No. Have you ever known him to have other women hit on him? Yes. yes. Have you ever responded similarly to such things? I don't always see them out, but when I do, that's how I handle it. <laughs> how many fights have you been in with women you, uh... you, you think are attracted to your man? Maybe two. Two fights? Yes. The others are online. Uh, online. And so you're just nasty and rude and... Yes. ...calling names and trolling and carrying it on. Can you tell me one thing that he's done that would inspire jealousy on your part? 
He hasn't done anything. He's he's not a rude person. He's <laughs> I trust him. I've had abusive relationships in the past, mm -hmm. physical and mental, mm -hmm. and he is the only person that has been upfront and honest with me about everything. Upfront and honest about everything. Yes. <laughs> now let me ask you this. Uh -oh. Miss Davis, has anybody ever hit on you? Yes. Has any guy ever told you you were good looking? Yes. Has anybody ever turned down the street and watched you walk down the street just because you're who you are? I don't pay attention. Mm -hmm. See, but you think maybe a few have? Maybe. <laughs> I don't think that highly of myself, so I, I... What do you do for a living? I, well, I mean, I model and act, but I mm -hmm. have a real job, too, mm -hmm. so... <laughs> Your do, Honor, if do, I could... Do, do you take a look around and look at the other models and see some of the things that they have in common, one of which is often uh, an unusual level of beauty? Do you see that? Mm -hmm. You aware? Uh, no. Oh, now, see, don't be silly. <laughs> don't, be, don't, don't come in here and be silly. Your Honor, you, you, she... you know the jobs you get. You know the people you're around. You know that. Don't be silly. You know you're beautiful. Being insincere... Is, is very distasteful. Don't do it. <laughs> That's what I live with, Your Honor. I try to tell her every day she's gorgeous. I mean, look at her. She's beautiful. I mean, this literally is my dream girl. Blonde hair, blue eyes. I mean... Is it just his fame and women's attraction to him that makes you concerned about marrying him? Or there are, are there other issues you have concerns about? I don't trust the other women. I trust him, I don't trust them, because they're very disrespectful in that industry. Mm -hmm. And there's a difference between fans and groupies. Mm -hmm. And I ran off the groupies and the real fans <laughs> stayed. So you ran right. off the groupies and the real fans stayed. Can you give me some of the rubrics you use to determine whether one is a fan or, or a groupie? What's, what's, <laughs> how, how do you figure that out? The groupie is the one who's Winky faces, hearts, you're so sexy. The fan is, I want to buy your next album. When are you coming to my town to perform? But what she doesn't understand is those groupies buy albums too. Gotcha. And they buy more albums than the regular fans. Than the regular fans do. He's so... got a point there. You have a five-year-old with an ex, yep. and her name is Holly Caldwell. We have brought her here. Mr. Diener, do, yes. does Ms. Caldwell and Ms. Davis get along? Are they... Think. Okay with each other? Now, Ms. Davis, he's never done anything to make you distrust him. Okay. Does he do anything at home that that is disrespectful or makes you feel like you're not the most important person in your life, that make, belittles you or, or, or in some way makes you feel negatively about yourself. None of that is going on. No. Right. And I understand that he has a, you have a five-year-old with an Sorry. ex, and yeah. her name is Holly Caldwell. We have brought her here, and I'd like her to come out Sorry. for a variety of reasons. <laughs> Welcome, Ms. Caldwell. Thank you Hi. so much for coming. I understand you two have a five-year-old together. We do. And you co-parent. Do you co-parent well? Do you guys get along? Everything's cool? Absolutely. For, I think we co-parent very well. Mr. Diener, do, does Ms. Caldwell and Ms. Davis get along? Are they okay with each other? They do. We had kind of a rough start. Uh-huh. You know, I think as of now, they are, are civil with each other. Uh -huh. um, so, yeah. Are you comfortable with the positive relationships that that he has with Miss Caldwell? Yes. Does, yeah. Doesn't cause you any consternation. No. That Do, doesn't worry you. No. It was a slow. Build, you trust though. him <laughs> completely with her. Yes. Okay, Miss Caldwell. Why don't you tell me how was it dating him? I I want to get a picture of okay. <laughs> the difficulties can I, can I that you had. Are you, <laughs> You want to take that one, Mr. Diener? You can. No, I said, can I step out? Oh, okay. Right? <laughs> <laughs> He's Ms. scared Ms. of me. Ms. Caldwell, give me, tell me the, the evolving story of this relationship. It was a slow build till where we are now, for sure. But the the rapper girlfriend days are a part of my past, and I am happy about that. How difficult <laughs> were they? They're they're relentless, actually. They're those girls are crazy. 
Did they, they contribute to the end of your relationship with Mr. Diener? Absolutely. You just couldn't put up with I'm it. I'm a pretty strong person, but I feel like that just... They are, they're relentless. That's the only just way to over put the it. top. Yeah, it's insane. It's <laughs> what was the worst presentation or the most difficult circumstance you were presented with when you were with him? Not so much the online, probably at the shows. Mm -hmm. You could tell the... Like she said, you can tell the difference between the groupies and the fans. Usually the groupies are up front because they want to touch, but they are not supposed to touch. <laughs> no touching. No touching, no. <laughs> now, they don't get backstage, do they? Sometimes they sneak. And try, but... but. Oh, they'll try all day and all night long. All day and night and all day long. And yeah. it was to the point where you didn't want to be involved with him anymore. No. It was, it, it, it was that constant. It's, you know what, when, when two people have a strong spiritual bond, they can get past it. I don't believe we did. Okay. <laughs> All right. Hey, you know, hey. you gotta be honest about things. I appreciate yeah. that. Thank you very much, Ms. Caldwell. Absolutely. Please have a seat. I Thank appreciate you. your insight. Somebody picked at you at some point, didn't they? Oh, yeah. Somebody yeah. took took a chisel and tick, 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 tick at your self-esteem and at your ego. And that little person, whoever that jerk was, is still in the back of your head with that chisel going tip, 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 tip. We gonna Absolutely. fight this jerk. I took a look at your compatibility tests, and, and you know, I saw basically in these papers what I saw out here. He, she said, I asked one thing you don't like about your intended, and it was the bearded villains. And <laughs> I didn't understand that until I, I uh, read the rest of the, the, uh, the document. So why don't you tell me about the bearded villains? Who are they, and why do they disturb you so? So, um, I have a friend whose husband formed this group called the Bearded Villains, and it's mostly on Instagram. Mm -hmm. And he asked Josh to become a part of it. Um, you get sponsors. He gets, like, beard oils every month and combs and all that. Um, you get fans. He had a quick following, over 5,000 5, people within days. Of guys just because with Cause beards? beards. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We also do charity. So, that's our thing is... We're, we call ourselves bearded villains, um, but we're not villains at all. I mean, we go out and we do charity. We hand out water uh, to our homeless people and stuff like that. Um, we've done book bag drives for schools, things like that. So. And he's got a following. Why don't you like that? Yeah. I mean, it seems like he seems like an honest, upstanding, <laughs> good guy. Well, hey, what's wrong with the bearded villains? It's not like they're a biker club. <laughs> Well, um, they're called pognophiles, mm -hmm. and uh, they're called they, pognophiles. Yes, and it's women who love beards, and they have their own special pages. So they will go in, they will comment, and say special things. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Dean, uh. you said something. Usually, when I give these compatibility tests, the yeah. only interesting things are, you know, what you don't like about yourself or you don't like about your intended. But I throw some other questions in here just mm -hmm. for the heck of it. And one <laughs> of them I throw in there is, if you could change one thing about your intended spouse, what would it be? Usually, I get something either, like, ridiculously jerky or nothing yeah. at all. <laughs> you said one of the most beautiful things I've ever heard, which was, I want her to get her confidence back. Mm-hmm. I do look at her. She's gorgeous. <laughs> I mean, inside and out. She's obviously a beautiful woman, but she's very caring. She's very giving. And to me, when, when we're walking down the street, a girl could walk by and she'd be like, I'm never going to look like that. Ah, she's so much hotter than me. She's much prettier. And it's like, there's no point to even bring that up. I tell her daily she's gorgeous. She's beautiful. I mean, she literally is my dream girl. What I wanted, I got. So why would I do anything to, to mess that up? Because I mean? somebody picked at you at some point, didn't they? Oh, yeah. Somebody took, took a chisel and tick, 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 tick at your self-esteem and at your ego. And that little person, whoever that jerk was, is still <laughs> in the back of your head with that chisel going tip, 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 tip. We Absolutely. gonna fight this jerk. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is the individual we're gonna get to. I don't know who he was, what he was to you, or I don't know if it was a she, I don't know if it was a whole group of trolls, I don't know who it was. <laughs> but we gonna work on that. I used to have a list of people I didn't like, and it was long. <laughs> 
And once you got on that list, it was almost impossible to get off. And once you were on that list, you knew you were there because I made sure you knew. <laughs> I don't fight, I don't punch, but I can take a group of words, tie them up into spear shape and drive it right through your heart. <laughs> I know where people are weak, I know where people are uncertain, and I can take their legs out up from under them verbally at will, since I was a little girl. <laughs> <laughs> what I figured out was that list wasn't hurting anybody but me. I was dragging around this long piece of paper of people who didn't like me and I, I was carrying them with me each and every day of my life. They decided how happy I could be. They decided how comfortable I could be. They decided how trusting I could be with other people. Those people who didn't like me were conducting all of their business in my head. My head. I want you to take whoever this person or persons is and get them off your list and you have to do it purposefully. They don't just walk away on their own. You have to decide every time you think about that person or every time you think about that negative thought, it's a time to stop and put down a positive thought. It's time to stop and do something that you, you're passionate about. I used to do volunteer work for people because whenever I felt bad about whatever this, that, and going on, I would go talk to these 14-year-old girls whose lives were just a horror, and I would give them love and affection, and I would think, oh, I'm cool, this person is wrong, off the list. And as I scratched each and every idiot off my list, I got lighter, I got happier, I got cooler, I got a better job. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> All I'm saying to you is, you got a guy who, by your own admission, was different than everybody you've ever known, spiritually connected to him unlike any other. You don't really like people, but you're crazy about him. He's a unique spiritual love, upfront, honest, and a model individual, and you trust him implicitly. Don't let ever John Jerk, whoever he was, take him from you. And it's not about how pretty you are, even though you are. <laughs> it's not about that. It's about how much he loves you and the quality of man that you've inspired to love you. And you have to take that and deal with it. And all them little trashy people, all that, they can't get him. They can get you. All of those little trolls on there are doing their business in your head. They're working your time. They're working your blood pressure. You're working your heart. Who are they? A bunch of 14-year-olds and 15-year-olds who, oh, I like this guy with a beard. <laughs> you don't, you don't, don't let other people run your life. Let them say, oh, look at all this trash they said about him. Hmm. Yeah. Baby, you want some more wine? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. You with me? Love him, care for him, take good, <laughs> you know what I mean? Hold him, kiss him, hug him tight, and marry that man as soon as you can. <laughs> this matter is a journey. <laughs>